Rub up your engines! Well, if you've been following oil and gas, the oil and gas industry is consolidating like never before. All these big companies are buying other big companies. And it's bad news for us as consumers because the more oil power that's in smaller hands, guess what? They can charge just as much as they want for gasoline because there's no competition then. All these oil companies are buying other oil companies to consolidate themselves. Merger and acquisition was $144 billion in the fourth quarter alone of 2023 and $190 billion for the whole year of 2023. That was just for the fourth quarter. Both are new records. ExxonMobil, Chevron, Occidental were the key players that were buying up all these other oil companies, right? Because they know there's money in it. And economic analyst said acquisition has become the preferred tool to replace declining reserves and secure longevity in these companies so they're just buying everything they can get their hands on so they got enough to sell to people as i say the buyers are increasingly showing a willingness to pay whatever it took to boost their footprint in the oil business and prices for future drilling inventory climbed to new highs we'll be paying more in the future for gasoline because of it they don't care they just pass it on if they had to pay all these billions guess what up goes the price of gasoline and if there's nobody else to complain to because there's only a few companies what is going on with the government we're supposed to have laws to stop corporations from taking over anything antitrust laws right why aren't these things being put into effect you know hey you think if anybody the democrats who are supposed to you know be watchful of the average person they're not doing anything about them they're letting them buy everything that they want because guess what the corporations have all the politicians in their back pockets it doesn't matter who they say who they are they take the oil money and then they let them do as they please and now they're going around buying everything in sight royal says i got an 05 honda crv as a shutter on takeoff i changed the torque converter front axles twice new tires ran a compression test changed spark plug put motor mounts and it's still doing it okay well i don't want to be the bearer of bad news you did change the torque converter right a lot of times shutter comes from a torque converter but unfortunately you got a 2005 honda crv now you didn't say the mileage that you have but it's a 19 year old vehicle so I'm sure it's really high miles 99% of the time that is your transmission if you've already changed the torque converter a lot of times it's a torque converter right but you change that and then that means your transmission is what's doing the shuttering because you take off and it shutters right if you had a standard transmission it would be your clutch is wearing out and it shutters right so you replace the clutch and probably the flywheel because if it's all worn it'll shutter when you take off well in your case you changed the torque converter and you got an automatic transmission so shuttering is inside the transmission it's unfortunate and you're going to find it cost a fortune to rebuild one of those honda transmissions they're very expensive it's a motorcycle style you can't take it down and take it apart it's got to be split in half and taken apart because it's a motorcycle type design honda originally being a motorcycle company so you might live with it as long as it goes okay because it's an 05 and if you say i'm going to get a young junkyard transmission it's going to be off another 19 year old car and it's probably worn out too take a says i have a problem with my horn i got a 2011 toyota but the horn won't work when i press on the steering wheel i check the fuse and realize are good what could it be it's one of of two things price just the horn go to where the horn is put power and ground to the two wires unplug them from the horn power to one side ground to the other get a little piece of wire connect it to the battery positive on the one side negative on the other. see if the horn blows if the horn doesn't blow you got a bad horn go buy another horn simple to do right now if it's not that and unfortunately in your case it probably isn't there's a part called the clock spring that's inside your steering wheel so you can turn your wheel and beep the horn the whole time because of contacts those wear out but then you got to take the airbag out take the steering wheel apart get a new clock spring assembly put it in and you have to have it reprogrammed because that has to do with the traction control system of the car and the steering so it's a very expensive endeavor right now let's say it is that and you don't want to spend that much money get yourself a toggle switch one of those momentary on you touch it then when you let go it turns off a momentarily on toggle switch get power to that with the fuse and run the wire to the horn then you'll have a little toggle switch horn every car i've ever owned practically except for the two toyotas i have now i had to put one of those horns on it i had a momentary toggle switch so and they'd be perfectly fine right because i had owned fords and uh chevys and uh, those all broken i wasn't taking them apart i just put a toggle switch but i do have to say for my toyotas the horn in the middle still works because they make them pretty well my old ones you've got a newer one just a 2011 mine are all older than that
when they made them so they did beep and didn't break. Well, thousands of speed tickets are being dismissed in Ohio, outside of Cleveland. I guess there's a nefarious little part of the interstate that the locals want to make money on. There were nearly 50,000 tickets given away off I-77 there. I drive on it when I drive back and forth from Rhode Island to Tennessee and back, right? And these were all, guess what? Speed tickets given by machines. And the reason they're dismissing them is because the company that does it didn't even give the people the tickets. And they didn't even know that they got a speeding ticket because nobody told them because it was a machine. That's one thing. Let's play it fair on a highway. If the cops are out there and you're speeding, and they pull you over, they give you a ticket in person. Okay, fair's fair. They caught you, you got it, you know you got a ticket. But if they hide machines all over the place that are taking pictures of you and saying that you're speeding and then you don't even get the bill in the mail, that's insanity. That's why many places are against us. When I was in Texas, they made all of those things illegal and the government signed into the law that it's illegal because the machines would screw up all the time. I got one from going through a red light and had a picture of the car, but the car was my wife's Lexus, and it had the brake lights on stopped at the light, right? <laughs> and then it said, oh, you got one for not stopping. Not stopping, you could see the brake lights were on in the picture, right? And the car was stopped. I didn't pay it because the hilarious thing there was, four weeks before the governor signed into law that those tickets are illegal that are given by machines. This happened to be in a suburb of Houston, and they had some kind of a deal going on. They, had, they signed a four-year contract with the company, and if they broke that contract, then the company would be paid millions of dollars. So they continued to give out tickets that were, in effect, totally illegal. It was against the law of Texas but they did it anyway. So, hey, fight the machines, right? And fight the politicians that allow these machines to even exist. Because they said, oh, it stops accidents. No, it doesn't, because you don't even know you got a ticket. It's not slowing you down, right? But if you're driving, you don't even know that it took your picture, and then you don't even get the thing in the mail, and then they tell you later you owe money. I hope they shut all these stupid things down, but they probably won't because the bureaucrats and local governments want to make as much money as they can. And if they can have people put up machines and gives them money, get Guess what? They will. I think everyone should fight this stuff tooth and nail. Just like they did in Texas, Texas made it illegal. If they want to have it, have policemen out there doing it. Then yeah, okay, they caught you, they caught you, they told you. It's not, well, the machine sent me a bill. I don't remember that, you know? No. You're going to remember that the policeman pulled you over and you're going to pay the ticket, right? Well, we all know there's crazy people out there on the roads. Well, a guy in Georgia was on the road. He impersonated a police officer with a fake badge, but the police came and he attempted to arrest them. And you can imagine what happened. He got arrested. In Marietta, Georgia, a man was walking down the street disrupting traffic. And when the Marietta police officers came up to him, he showed him a special badge that said special police and told the officers they were under arrest and read them their Miranda rights. And he said, Certainly must have had much upstairs because, as you can see, the police wagon that came to get him said Marietta Police on the side in big giant letters with a white background, right? <laughs> you think you could have seen that, but <laughs> kind of makes you wonder about people, you know? Kind of makes you wonder. At least he wasn't driving a fake police car himself and pulled him over. He was just walking down the street acting crazy. Guess it's just another crazy person out there who had some strange ideas and now he's probably in jail where he belongs. Or Really, probably needs to go into a psychiatric unit if he did that kind of crazy stuff. It was so obvious that these other guys were police, and he was. Well, they tell you not to drink and drive, and that's probably a very wise decision. Well, in the case of these guys in Kansas City, perhaps they shouldn't have drunk and gone into their backyard because three Kansas City Chief fans were found dead in this guy's backyard. Nobody knows the real story of what went on. These three guys were found 48 hours after the game, frozen in the death in the backyard. It was in Kansas City. It gets really cold there in the winter, right? It's kind of like Jack Nicholson in The Shiny, right? In the end, he's frozen with a look on his face. So it's bad enough people drink and drive. If you do drink, don't go outside when it's freezing cold. You might end up like these three guys. I just find it weird. They didn't find him for 48 hours. Didn't people kind of wonder, hey, what happened to Joe? Where's he been the last 48 hours? That's just kind of crazy itself. Now, one person said of their relative, I'm not going to say that during the game, he didn't have some drinks, but he wasn't irresponsible enough that he was going to go outside and freeze to death. Well, I beg to differ with then. It seems like he did go outside and froze to 
and does with two of his other friends. That's about the only thing that makes sense to me because when people drink, they have this warm feeling and a lot of people will go outside and they don't feel the cold that way. If they were doing something else, they'd probably be feel even colder. No, oh, man, I'm freezing. I'm going back in the house, right? Three guys now were frozen to death in the back of this guy's yard in Kansas City and for some weird reason, nobody even thought about it for 48 hours. Not only should you not drink and drive your car, you should not drink and go outside if you're going to get that carried away. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.